Following on from looking at the statistical significance of the in-sample phase of the optimization in part 7.2, we now move on to the warp forward stage. So the underlying implications of poor statistical significance here are very different. Since the out-of-sample warp forward tests are used to validate the parameter values, when there's a lack of statistical significance here, it means that the results from the warp forward test can't be trusted as giving us a true indication of what the performance would be like when we traded the system in our live account. However, with high statistical significance here, we can have some assurance and some level of trust that the results in the live trading scenario are going to be fairly similar to what we've already seen in the walk forward phase here. So do we measure statistical significance for these two phases in the same way? Well, no, we don't and we can't because they're fundamentally different. Remember, the walk forward phase has fixed variable values that are tested against that out of sample data, while the optimization had variables that were free to move. So it has a number of degrees of freedom. And we said last time that these degrees of freedom mean that we require higher sample sizes of non-correlated trades in order to maintain the same level of statistical significance. So at a very basic level, the level of statistical significance in the in-sample phase is proportional to a function of the sample size over a function of the degrees of freedom. So the number of parameters that we're allowing to have variable values for the optimization process. Whereas in the out of sample, here the statistical significance is simply proportional to the sample size because we don't have any degrees of freedom. Now we require that the statistical significance is of a good level in both the in sample and the out of sample if we're going to have a successful process. And so we need to try to balance the statistical significance across these phases. And it's this balancing process that will determine how big the in-sample phase needs to be compared to the out-of-sample phase. Now, the more degrees of freedom that you use, the bigger the in-sample optimization phase will need to be. So I have a few simple rules that I use in terms of the degrees of freedom. So when we have two degrees of freedom, I tend to use a ratio of three to one. So the in-sample optimization is three times larger than the out-of-sample walk forward. So effectively, that's using 75% of the data for your optimization and 25% for the walk forward. Now, as I said before, if you increase your degrees of freedom to let's say three, this means you need to increase the size of your in sample phase in order to maintain the level of statistical significance that you need. So here I tend to use four to one, which of course is 80% and 20%. Now, if you go down to just one degree of freedom, what I tend to use is two to one. And so here you're looking at 67%, 33%. Now, if you were to continue increasing the degrees of freedom, so optimizing more variables, then your out of sample phase would need to get bigger and bigger in order to sustain the statistical significance that you needed. And this would force the walk forward phase to shrink. And if it shrinks too much, then it doesn't serve any reasonable purpose any longer because you won't be able to trust the results in it. So as I've said before, I try to keep the number of parameters that I'm optimizing to either two or a maximum of three. Now you can, in some circumstances, vary these values, of course. So if you've already got confidence in your system because you've already been trading it in your live account and you know that the system works, then maybe you can give more emphasis to the parameter extraction phase by allowing that to have a larger size in relation to the walk forward phase. If, however, you've got a system that you've never traded live and you don't yet have that level of confidence that you've got a true edge, then maybe you want to allocate more of the data to your walk forward phase in order to gain that confidence. Now, just one more thing. You'll notice when I made a reference to sample size earlier on, I said the number of non-correlated trades. So what did I mean by this? 
What if the rules of your system dictate that a single entry and exit for each trade is executed, where the full trade size is opened in one go and then closed in one go, then you don't need to worry about this. Your trade should be uncorrelated already. However, many traders choose to scale in their trades and scale them out, so where the full position size is entered and exited incrementally. Now, as a methodology, this is good. There's nothing wrong with it at all. But what it does mean is that a single decision of the system might lead to maybe three, six, or even more individual trades. And these trades, by their very nature, will be highly correlated. And so each individual trade should not be considered as one trade for the sample size. The collective of trades for each decision will each lead to a sample size of more than one, but probably only marginally more. So hopefully you've got a good understanding now of how the implications of poor statistical significance are different for each of the two phases of the process, and also have an idea of how to design the duration of those phases based on the degrees of freedom that you're using. And this is all to get a good balance of statistical significance across both of those phases. So if you feel you've got some value from this episode, then please give me a thumbs up because that's what lets me know that I'm talking about the right kind of things. And remember to share and subscribe if you haven't done already. Now in the next episode, I'm going to be looking at optimization profiles and how to select the best parameters from the optimization phase. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean just selecting the highest value. And so more on that in the next episode. And so until then, trade safe.